Good evening, everyone. Today is Monday, April 5th, 2021. This is the regular meeting of the Planning Board of Asbury Park. And uh, Barbara, will you please call us to order? Yes, uh, me meeting is officially called to order. Uh, the following meeting is being conducted by electronic means in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, amended 2020, which explicitly permits a public body to conduct meetings electronically during a state of emergency. Adequate notice of this meeting have been provided to the Coaster and Asbury Park Press. All notices are on file with the board secretary. In addition, a notice regarding this virtual meeting and instructions are published in the Asbury Park Press and City of Asbury Park website. A copy of this notice is on file with the board of secretary. The notices and conduct of this meeting are in accordance with the guidelines of the virtual meetings issued by the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Please note that all microphones of public use are muted until the public question or comment period. If you'd like to speak during those times only, please raise your hand uh, via the, in the Zoom button if you're on a computer or dial star nine in, if on a telephone. Your name or last four digits of your phone number will be called when it is your turn to speak. If at any time your question, you, if, if any time during your question you are deemed to be out of line or topic, we reserve the right to mute your microphone and we'll make an announcement that this has occurred. During the public comment session only, the public will have three minutes to speak. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices during the meeting. Please identify yourself before you speak. And this meeting is being recorded and will be available to view via APTV. And just another warning that if anyone, whether it's the public applicant or anyone else that, that treats the board members, the professionals, or anyone else with disrespect, they will receive one warning. And the second warning, they will be removed from the meeting. Um, join me in the salute of the flag. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance. To the United States of America. To the Republic. 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 To the Irina, you're muted. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sorry, just sorry. Okay, there we go. I'm so sorry about that. I just converted to my laptop. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton. Here. Michael Mancella. Here. Jim Henry. Here. Jennifer Souter. Here. Trudy Syfax is absent. Alexis Taylor. Here. Eric Gallipo. Here. Rick Lambert. Here. And Barbara Krizak. Here. Thank you, everyone. All right, the first, the first item that we have, we have the minutes. Um, we have uh, two minutes for approval. So minutes of March 15th, 2021 of the regular meeting. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Jim Henry. Thank you, Yvonne Clayton. Okay, I have a motion by Jim Henry and a second by Yvonne Clayton. All in favor, um, and I believe everyone is eligible to vote on those minutes, say aye. 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 Thank you, any opposed? All right, minutes approved. Uh, the second item that we have is uh, are the minutes for November 16th, 2020, regular meeting. Can I get a motion to approve? Move to Move approve. Yvonne Clark. Second. I have a motion by Yvonne Clayton and a second by Michael Manzella. All eligible in favor? Aye. 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 Jim Henry abstains. Thank you, Mr. Henry. And 
Any opposed? Is Thank you. Irene, Minutes of November 16th, 2020 approved. Irene, is everyone else eligible? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, now we have a few resolutions to take care of. The first resolution is appointing the planning board planner for 2021. Can I get a motion to approve? Move it, Mike Manzala. A second, Jen Souter. I have a motion by Michael Manzella and a second by Jennifer Souter. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Anyone opposed? Thank you. The I think we need an extension. I think, need to, the, the, I think the mayor voted in the negative. On yes, that's, action, you're correct. So he should, so he's, should be uh, abstaining. Okay. Yes, that's correct. So Mayor Moore, abstain. All others in favor? Let's just try that again. Um, Mayor Moore, abstain. All others in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. And the resolution for professional planner for the planning board for 2021 uh, is approved. Hey, baby. Okay, um, resolution, the next one we have is a resolution appointing the planning board conflict planner for 2021. Can I get a motion to approve? Move it, Mike Manzella. Second, Yvonne Clayton. I have a motion by Michael Manzella and a second by Yvonne Clayton. And I believe everyone is eligible for to vote on this resolution. <clears throat> so all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And any opposed? Resolution for conflict planner for 2021 approved. Okay. Um, yeah, we have an application uh, for 202 7th Avenue. I'd just like to speak to the, uh, the planning board members. Just, uh, I apologize for all the emails that came out today uh, with some extra documentation. That documentation was uh, from the past. We wanted to, uh, what I noticed that this application um, is about six months old. I kind of thought that maybe you might need a little refresher. Uh, so that's why I asked Arena to send you uh, some extra documentation. And all of this you would have received six months ago anyway, but we just wanted to, uh, just in case you needed it or have difficulty finding it. So if, if, if there was an issue with all the, with all the emails, it's my fault. Um, okay. Um, let's get started. Okay, um, Chairwoman, yes. first and foremost, let's, uh, let's get Rick Lambert, uh, ah. make his announcement regarding listening and uh, watching the tape from September 21st of 2020. Yeah, I affirm that I did watch that tape today and um, in its entirety. So yeah, and the reason uh, we don't have him signing the certification this evening because he can't print it. So he's putting it on the record. He will sign the certification and it will be entered into the file uh, tomorrow or thereafter. So he, uh, so Rick is eligible. And I reviewed the notices. The, this meeting was re-noticed by the applicant. The notices are in proper form. Uh, we have jurisdiction to proceed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Irina, can you hear me all okay? Yes, you're great. Right. I'll say, uh, so good evening, uh, Chairwoman and Mayor and Councilwoman and ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Kevin Kennedy. I'm glad uh, uh, to be back before you, um, hoping for the day when we sometimes are all in the same room again. Um, I think that will be coming, but uh, until then, uh, we'll do it this way. And uh, you will recall we are here on the property 202 7th Avenue, it's block 4201, lots three and four. And as you've indicated, this is a continued hearing from uh, way back in September 21st, 2020. Um, you may recall, and uh, Madam Chair, I totally concur with you uh, and agree with you to bring everyone up to date and have a a sort of a review period, uh, given the length of time and given the number of applications which was across your, your desk. Uh, so you may recall that my client, 202 7th Avenue LLC, is the subsequent developer. Now, the term subsequent developer is a term of art. And in this case, in the context of the city's redevelopment regulations, 
That essentially means that A, the property in question is in uh, this case, the city's waterfront redevelopment area. Uh, two, that there is a master developer. And three, through a series of very detailed procedural requirements, the city and the uh, master developer have conditionally authorized my client to serve as the subsequent developer of this particular parcel. And uh, that's why we're here tonight in furtherance of that process. And we are respectfully <coughs> seeking approval to demolish the existing structure at the site, at the site and uh, construction of 14 for sale condominiums in a five story building, uh, rooftop deck, parking garage, and other amenities. Uh, you will recall if uh, from the first meeting, uh, we did have some uh, testimony that indicated we appeared at the uh, technical review committee meeting. And as I recall, I think about 20, 20 people there in terms of professionals and, and board uh, committee members and other uh, officials. So we were at the TRC, I believe it was September 16th, 2019 and November 17th, 2019. And ultimately that uh, resulted in on or about December 4th, 2019, the TRC recommended that the city of Asbury Park uh, City Council grant conceptual approval, which that was done. And again, that's part of that detailed procedural requirement that uh, we as a subsequent developer need to do in order to uh, continue this process. At the September 2020 hearing, we had a, a very good presentation and uh, my notes reflect we had sworn testimony from Bill Stuckey, who is the manager of the project, and also uh, Rich Arsberger, our architect. Uh, the evening was getting getting late and uh, the board members had some certain questions and comments. And uh, so the matter was adjourned. And as I recall, and certainly I defer to your uh, recollections as well, uh, some of the more prominent items or discussion points which needed to be addressed included, one, we had to get a written subsequent developers agreement. Uh, that's a procedural requirement for the planning board to take action. Um, and I'm pleased to say that a subsequent developer agreement has been fully executed between ISTAR, my client, and the city. So we have that. So uh, we're, we're lawfully here before you. And there was a lot of uh, running around on everybody's part to get that agreement uh, signed. And I thank all individuals who uh, contributed. Uh, my notes further reflect that we had some questions or comments about uh, Madam Chair, the board wanted to see some more details. They wanted some information, uh, testimony on signs. Uh, I think they wanted additional elevations, particularly the side and the rear. I think there was a concern that, that they were not presented. Um, there was a concern about having wheel stops in the garage. There was a concern about the glass guard rails on the balconies. It didn't seem to be a big aesthetic hit, uh, which the, with the board, as I recall, and therefore they they those plans have been revised. Our architect will talk about that, uh, but not to um, pull the secret out, but it's basically changed to a cable wire uh, guardrail. And I think there was some request to change one of the white vinyl fences to a board on board wooden fence. So we'll, we'll revise plans have been uh, submitted and I'll ask Irina momentarily if we need to uh, mark any of them in, into the record. But um, and I guess speaking of arena, I should say officially welcome back. It, it's good to uh, have you back. And also, Mr. Lambert, I thank you for listening to the tapes. I know that's not always an easy thing to do, but it's an important thing. And it gives us a fuller compliment of board members. So, so thank you for that. And um, Madam Chair, as we've indicated, it's, it's been a while since we've all been in this format uh, on this particular application. So um, with your uh, presumed agreement, I would like to uh, uh, have some testimony from Pat Fasano, who's the managing member of this entity. Uh, we can have him sworn and basically give a brief overview of the project. And uh, basically, I would like him, he did not testify at the first hearing, but I would like him to sort of say what he's proposing, why he's proposing, uh, what factors led him uh, to make certain design and incorporate certain design options and not others. I think that will be helpful and I think it will be a nice way to reorient everyone towards, towards uh, the project. Thereafter, I anticipate calling Rich Arsberger, our architect, uh, not to repeat the testimony, but just to 
basically uh, briefly recite some of the changes uh, to the plan revisions. And then we have Walt Hopkins, who was our engineer and planner. He did not testify at the last uh, hearing. So we'll have him sworn and we'll hear from him. Uh, it's been a while, as I've said, since we've uh, all been in this uh, room together uh, for this application. Uh, we are very anxious to proceed. We are thrilled to be on the board agenda tonight. We are hopeful uh, for a, a positive reception. And uh, Madam Chair, I thank you for allowing us the opportunity. And with that, if it's okay, I'll have uh, Pat Pisano sworn. I actually, I'd like to, before we, before we go there, um, there were, uh, I too, along with Rick, listened to the, uh, the tapes once again today to, to, to see, because I know that there were a lot of outstanding issues and a lot of changes we'd requested and, a, and, new, um, and new documents to be presented. Uh, I have not seen those, uh, that they've been done, but if you, uh, I'd like to go through that before we get to Pat, so that we clearly understand what, whether you've made those changes on some document that, um, that you've provided, or if you have not. And what's the plan? Because okay. I don't want to go through a whole presentation when we have like a list of 10 things that we wanted and maybe we, I don't know how many we have. So before we get started, Fair can we just go through that list to see, do you have this today? And, and did you, and does the board have these documents today? Okay. Okay. And, and Madam Chair, uh, do you want me to, in case any of these uh, answers are going to be given by my team, do you want to have them sworn first, just in case? Sure. All right. So, uh, Jack, should I do this one by one, or how do you want me to do this? Uh, let's have all of your uh, witnesses sworn. Uh, after this, we will take them one at a time, cross them. We're not going to do it en masse. Okay. Right. The right. one. Okay. So why don't we start with uh, Pat Fasano? I can't see him. Oh, there he is. Hey, Pat, how are you? Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the testimony about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record. Uh, so you can put your hand down. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, spell it uh, and your affiliation with the applicant. Patrick Pasano, F A S A N O. I'm the member of the 202. 207 7th Avenue LLC. Thank you. Uh, next, Kevin. Who, who's uh, Rich Arsberger. Okay, can we get him on the camera so I can see? Sure. I, I testified in the first meeting and I understand that I'm still under oath. Yeah, but you're going to get sworn again. Do you solemnly swear the testimony about giving this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record, spell it, and tell us uh, your position with the applicant. Uh, Richard Arsberger, A R Z B E R G E R. Uh, I'm uh, associated with um, Sunfeld and Tropia Architects in Homedale, New Jersey, and we're the architect of the project. Thank you. Next, Kevin. Walter Hopkin. Walter, hey, Walter how are you? Hi, good. Please raise, please raise your right hand. Okay. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony about giving this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, please state and spell your name for the record and give us your affiliation and in what capacity you are appearing uh, on behalf of the applicant. Sure, Walter Hopkin, H-O-P-K-I-N. I'm the professional engineer and professional planner for the project and our firm prepared the site plan submitted to the board. Great. Kevin, anyone else? No, nope, that was it, sir. Yeah. Okay, what I'm also going to do is I'd like to get Michael Sullivan and Jason uh, Doug's not with us this evening, Jason. Correct. Correct. Okay, so let's get Michael and Jason sworn. Gentlemen, please raise your right hands. You solemnly swear that the testimony about the given this matter will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. State your names for the record and your affiliation with the board, please. Michael Sullivan, Clark Caton Hints, board planner. Thank you. Jason Pitcher, Inside Engineering, board engineer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, you can go right ahead. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is that as I go through these, I'd just like to know if I understand that the architect will be speaking today. He'll be, he's first up after Pat. Uh, but I would like to know if, um, as I go through these, 
if the engineer will cover them and if they are on some document already, or if they are on the document you provided, uh, which I have one document uh, listed as A1. Uh, I'm not sure what it was, what number was provided, Irina, but it's A1 to A5. This is the only document that I received containing floor plans. Irina? Yes, I'm sorry. That is going to be, that is actually marked into exhibit as A5, which is the site plan. Right. The so revised the site, site plan. Okay, so that site plan was received and that's the only additional documentation that was provided to the board since our last meeting. So here's some things that we asked for in the last meeting. And I'm going to ask my uh, planning board um, members also that if I have forgotten anything to please speak up. But I think that I've got a pretty good handle on it. And Barbara? I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Chairman. That is actually exhibit um, A5 and it's the revised architectural submission dated 326, 2021. Yes. That's the one that was provided to the planning board. Okay. What we had asked for from the last meeting was additional renderings from the South, East and West for accuracy, because what we noticed were buildings that were put in in that rendering that didn't exist or that didn't look anything like the buildings that were there. So we couldn't tell what these, the sides of these buildings looked like, the properties around them, we couldn't tell. So we were asking for that. I have not seen that in our package. Were you, did you, did, does that exist? Yes, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt again. This is Irina. Um, so those documents, the renderings were not received as part of the the hard copy submission, but they were sent to the board members um, in the email that went out last Thursday and uh, as part of the revised submission. Um, and they are marked into exhibit as A6. And would you like me to share my screen and put them no, up? No, not, not right now, when it's time. Okay. All we'll right, so they, okay. they are uh, marked as exhibit A6, a7 and A8, and they are the front east elevation, the front west elevation, and the rear elevation. And they are also um, shared on the planning board web page uh, to the public. Okay. Um, there was another one we requested streetscape. Documentation on streetscape. Did we receive that? I do not believe any documentation was submitted. We are prepared to talk about it tonight, Madam Chair, but I do not believe any uh, documentation was submitted. Okay. What about, uh, I know that we had discussions about things about parking having to do with parking outside the building. Uh, we, we requested a depiction of what the parking is today and what the parking is proposed. We requested that along with curb cuts and loading zones. So. Did we receive that? I do not believe any documentation was submitted, but Walter Opkin, our engineer, is prepared to discuss that. M Madam Chair, if, if I may, that is included on in our site plans uh, that were submitted uh, last year sometime. So I just want to make you aware okay. that they are, and I can point them out when we get to them. But they, they, were, they have been available to the board for months. Okay, I, I haven't seen it, but I'll, I'll trust you on that one. We'll go over it when, it, when it's time. Okay. All right, we asked for information and I'm fine if you tell me we're gonna talk about it, about the refuse, whether where, where it's going to be ventilating, whether it's going to be refrigerated. Will we have that discussion today? We absolutely will, Chair. Okay, fine. Um, we're supposed, we were also looking for uh, an understanding and this would be from Mr. Sullivan. Uh, are there additional exceptions based on frosted glass that was going to be used on the garage door and an additional exception based on sliders. So those are two additional exceptions that were not in the original submission 
or the original report? Do we feel that that's, that there will be two more exceptions? Mr. Sullivan. If, the, if they have not been changed, then yes. We, we, need to hear a we need to hear a description of the proposed, the new elevations. If that's been changed, then, then it may not be. Okay, so this has to do with the frosted glass on the garage and sliders on the units. Okay, Correct. so we'll have that discussion. We'll make sure we bring that up. Right. Um, other thing, we wanted some clarity on the signage. Uh, I know that there was a mention of signage and that you would adhere to whatever the rules are. Uh, we'd like to know. We'd like to see what you're going to be doing. If it truly is only the number on the street on the building, all right. Let's state it. Next thing, Madam Chair, that is yes. what we will state that it is just the numbers on the building, and we will have Mr. Fasano represent that on the record. Okay. Um, I know that there was mention about fencing and gates by the engineer. We're going to review that today. Yes. Okay. Um, and we, I know that there was a request from one of the board members having to do with the third and fourth floor terraces, uh, where on the second floor, um, where on the plans, everything said that it was like the second, third, and fourth floor plan, but the terraces on the third and the fourth floor are indeed different than on the second floor. Was that changed on the plan? That was resubmitted. I'll, I'll have the engineer, I'm sorry, the architect answer that, Rich, I mean, Rich, come on over. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the discrepancy is, but the second floor, the second floor extends out to the limits of the rear wall of the garage. The others are, uh, the third and fourth floor are identical. And Madam Chair, you are correct, that was a discussion item, and when I bring Mr. Arsberger back up, we can address that. All right, so that was not changed on the plan? No. No. Okay, so that was not done. Okay. Um, let me take a look at other, any other things. I know that we had discussed also the, the striping that will happen and parking. So therefore, we'll, I assume that that will be covered uh, as we said it would be. Yes, it will be by Walter. Um, uh, okay, signage, frosted glass. Okay, and um, we are gonna be looking for regarding the garage door, the warning light, You we're gonna talk about it. And um, I'd like to, when we get to that, I'd like to hear that you are gonna be doing a warning light when the garage door is open. Um, and that's all I have, unless there's something else that the uh, board members have besides that. I know that we had a condition that uh, Ms. Clayton had about the wheel stops and installing the wheel stops. That yes. would be a condition. Uh, and Madam Chair, just for the record, the, the wheel stop uh, plan, the, that revision, or we've agreed to that and Walter Humpkin uh, will testify to that. Okay. Madam Chair, this is Michael Sullivan. Uh, the lighting, uh, just documentation regarding the lighting details and the illumination, um, I believe remains outstanding. There's been nothing um, submitted uh, as part of the site plan. Um, and also uh, utilities, the HVAC uh, compressors and, and the relationship of those to the, uh, the side yards and, the, and recommendation to put it on the roof. Yes, we're going to have to have that discussion also because, um, Jason, did, did you receive the lighting plan? Because I have a lighting plan in my hand. Yeah, I have a lighting plan. I believe it was submitted as, um, it was three sheets. It was separate. It was prepared by the architect. I'll give you the date to make sure we have the same thing. Actually, it's unsigned, the one I have, but it's dated September 3rd, 2020. Okay, so it seems as though maybe uh, Mr. Sullivan didn't, his office did not receive it, which is a problem unto itself. But um, uh, that's Madam something. Chair, can, can we um, confirm with the applicant that that is the latest lighting plan that was submitted, unsigned, dated uh, September 3rd, 2020? 
September. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so we have a procedural issue here. Is how somehow Mr. Fitzgerald's fixtures. Um, Company received it, but somehow our planner did not. Um, that's an issue, but yeah, I, I, that's I, a procedural believe, issue. Yeah, I think it, it it didn't come into the city. It's not part of the record in terms of the documentation. That's that's really oh. the issue. Okay, we need to get that. Irina, I'm not sure how we resolve that. Where are you? Yeah, I, I'm so sorry. Are. I I don't know if that was something that happened in the office or um, on my part. Okay. Uh, and well, it, but we needed to get it, into the city and yes, we'll with. take care of that. Thank you. Okay. Right. Well, right. and, and, and it may be that after the discussion tonight, it, it, a, a new revised, updated lighting plan will make its appearance known to the planning office, and we can all take a look at it. Yep. All right, I think that that's all that I have. Uh, I don't know if anybody else here, the planning board members, if they had anything that I didn't cover, I think that I I spoke for everyone with their concerns. Okay. Hey, Madam Chair, thank you. That was a very uh, thorough uh, summation and, I, and I, I appreciate also you listening to the tapes as well. Um, so we will address the overwhelming majority of those things which have not already been addressed. So I thank you for allowing the opportunity. And should I turn it over to Mr. Fasano? Uh, yes, but but let me just also mention that that I am disappointed that we did not receive these things. So let's so move noted. on. Let's thank move you. On. So Pat, we'll, we'll swear you in. Are you already sworn in? I'm already sworn. And um, Pat, just for the record, you testified that you're the managing member of this entity, correct? That's correct. And for the record, you're familiar with the property? Yes, I've owned it many years. And you're the, familiar with the plans which have been submitted? Yes, I am. And I know uh, you weren't, at least in this room, during the first hearing, but I know you've had many discussions about the recaps of, of the meeting, the first meeting. That's correct. Okay. So why don't you, because you weren't here the first time, and we do want to have a recap uh, why don't you tell the board, first of all, you have experience, as I understand it, you have experience in the Asbury Park development and construction industry? Yes, I do. Okay. And uh, just tell us a little bit about your experience, real briefly. Well, we've, we've done quite a few condominium projects in Asbury Park. I think, in fact, uh, we sold about 170 condos to uh, owner occupants over the over the years, you know, starting with uh, Ocean Arms and and uh, the Mercury and the, the Madison, and, uh, can't even remember all the names, but it's quite a few projects that we did condominium conversion. So we have a lot of experience in managing the projects, and uh, you know, as far as dealing with having a, having a porter, we, we've learned what's important and maintaining the property. Um, you know, more important certainly than a refrigerated garbage room for 14 units is having a porter on site. All of our buildings, in fact, we had a gentleman named Francisco that lived at 1700 Webb, he's super there. And on a daily basis, he would go to every single one of our buildings and perform a porter service, cleaning up the hallways, cleaning up the garbage room, maintaining the property. And that's about the most proactive thing you can do when you own a building like that. Now, this and, and is, it, is, it, is it safe to say that you have significant experience in both the development process yeah. Yeah, I mean, and the construction process Yeah, I mean, this, and the management process? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't personally manage the condominiums. We turn them over to, uh, to JMJ, who manages all our condominiums in town. They have a vast amount of experience with this, okay. and they're excellent property managers, in my opinion. Uh, again... This particular building I'm very concerned with because I'm going to be an owner occupant in this building. This building was designed so that the apartment with the large deck on top would be my apartment. And, you know, I, I designed that building so I would live there. And, you know, at this point, I'm 65 years old. I'm starting to think I need an elevator. I'm going to need an elevator in a few years, even though I'm still pretty spry for 65. And there's, you know, I want a big deck with outdoor space because God knows how many more variants and how many more times we have to sit outside. I think I had a freezing Thanksgiving dinner sitting outside and, you know, we just had Easter outside and 
God knows if we're going to have Christmas outside. So, you know, we certainly learn that outdoor space is very important. And there's certainly anyone who's buying a condominium down the shore does not want a Juliet balcony. They want a balcony that they can actually sit on and enjoy. So we, we design these buildings with a favorable balcony. Uh, I can assure you, if, you know, um, I'm very fussy about the way I maintain things, that the garbage room and the hallways will be spotless. Uh, and it's mostly due to having a porter service. You have to have someone on a daily basis really take care of that. And you know we're gonna we're gonna be there. We're gonna live at that building. And we're gonna we're gonna maintain it. So I just you know want want it to be clear that this isn't just an investment. I've I've been in Asbury Park since the mid '90s. Uh, I bought my first home on Grand Avenue in 2005, moving from Ocean Grove, my home in Ocean Grove. I moved to Asbury Park from Ocean Grove in 2005. I lived on Grand Avenue for up until recently when when I sold the home. And uh, now I live on that. 206 Third Avenue, and that's just like a temporary spot next to the hotel. We're planning on demolishing the hotel and, and, and that house to make way for a uh, another redevelopment project some someday down the road. We'll see. But right now, I was interested in that location in particular. I like the beach over there. I like the location, and I'm going to be an owner occupant in that building. So I just want the board to understand that. And there will, it's my understanding that there will be a condominium association. Yes, absolutely. You're going to have a condominium association that uh, will be managed by you know, JMJ, which is the company that we use. They do the Miramar, they do the Mercury, they do all the buildings that we've converted. And we have not had any problems. And, and we've always turned those boards over after we sell out our interests. And they always manage to keep uh, JMJ because they do such a great job. And we're going to hear professional testimony uh, on this, but just in terms of because the board was rightly concerned about how the refuse and garbage yeah. uh, situation is going to work. So you have familiar with, familiarity with that in terms of your other projects. So how do you envision the garbage situation to work at this particular project? Yeah, I mean, as, look, as long as people are responsible, you don't have a problem. I mean, the recycling is put out every week and the garbage is put out twice a week. If you rinse your garbage cans out and keep your room clean, you know, uh, you're know you not gonna have any, any issue with the smell. So the code requires it to be ventilated and I require it to be clean. And that's the most important feature. And you've indicated importantly that, you know, people have to be responsible for, yeah. like for those few occasions where you have someone who's not responsible, I guess that's a role of the management company and the association. Yeah. That's why we have a porter visit the property uh, you know, five days a week. So five days a week, you have a porter. So these are, so Monday, Sunday night, the garbage goes out for Monday pickup. You bring the cans in, Tuesday, the recycle goes out. By Wednesday night, the garbage is going out again for Thursday pickup. So you got Monday, Thursday, garbage pickup. You got Tuesday, recycle pickup. Already the guy's there four days. So he's there five days. He checks the hallways, makes sure everything's clean. And we have a regular schedule of names. And that's, you know, we do that with all our properties. Mer Mercury, we have 18 units with an interior garbage room. We have no problems there. The only time you really have a problem is when somebody moves in and you have a lot of cardboard generated. Generally, you know, I'll get, get it taken over to the city recycling center and not leave it in the garbage room or put it out to the curb. You generally run it over to the recycle center on, on Main Street. When, when somebody moves in. But the management company and yeah. or the porter yeah. have the extra set of eyes and ears there to ensure. A hundred percent. That's the way they work. Mary Jo is in the office and, and John is out in the field. Uh, that's the JMJ. And then Francisco is the porter. And that's how we operate. And then I had, in response to a question from the chair, I had indicated uh, that uh, the signage is just going to be the, the number sign. And um, yeah, so this, you should that should really come from you. It's not a business. This is not a business. We're not advertising. This is a private residence and it's just going to have a number on it. And I'm not trying to, you know, draw attention to it. It's going to be a, just the number on the building and, and that's it. And obviously it'll comply with the prevalent cities, prevailing design regulations. 100 percent Okay. Um I think there was some some uh, uh Testimony, I think, addressed on this about questions about balconies, and you feel pretty strongly that balconies are important in this type of beach project. Yeah, I mean, listen, when when this plan was 
I was here when this plan was written. Okay, I've, I've been in Asbury Park a long time. I was at the Berkeley Carteret when they brought the father of New Urbanism in, Andre Duani. We sat with him. That plan was written in about 2002. You know, things have changed since 2002. Doesn't everyone know that? That things have definitely changed and design tastes have changed. And the city needs to move forward with that. You know, it's not, you know, you, know, you said something interesting about the coronavirus. And I guess that sort of ties in with living, uh, outdoor living and people have learned that they can live from their home. So I want to give them a beautiful home to live in that they could work out. Okay. This is what they've learned. They've learned that. We don't need so many shopping centers. We don't need so many office buildings. We can work from our homes. So I'm going to give you a beautiful home to work in with a view of the ocean. You can be able to sit outside and enjoy the weather. And that's what it was all about. People come to the shore for an ocean view and an ocean breeze. And that's what we should emphasize. And that's, you know, that's what I'm proposing okay. in the building that I want to live in. And that's how I'm going to hopefully attract people interested in coming to Asbury Park and living in that building. Thank you, Pat. I don't have any direct further direct questions to you. Before we turn it over to the board members, do you have anything else to conclude? Anything else to add? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully we can get through this and we'll just keep moving forward. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm done with my direct for Mr. Fasano. Planning board, do any planning board members have any questions for Mr. Fasan Fasano before we get to the actual testimony of the professionals? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm guessing that we, uh, we are anxiously awaiting to get the answers to our questions that okay. we have, but the professionals will provide those. Sure. So, uh, Rich will come on. Before we go to the next witness, we have to open it up to cross. Oh, I'm sorry. Open Pat, that's subject to cross-examination by members of the public or anyone? Does anybody, do we have... Uh, Okay, we have. I a, have. Uh, I have. I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. This I have two hands raised. <clears throat> the first person is Ginger Margoli. Please go ahead and ask your question. Wait, Ginger. Hello, Ginger. Hello, Ms. Margoli. Ms. Margoli, please. Unmute yourself and you may ask your question. Maybe we should go to the next one and then come back to Miss Margot. Sure, let's try that. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry, just one moment. Okay, and just to let you know, Ms. Margoli, if you are having difficulty, if you are on a computer, please try dialing in with a telephone. And the next person with their hand raised is Mr. Magnoli. Go ahead and speak. Not yet. Mr. Magnoli. Hello? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, before you speak, please be advised that Questions have to be relevant to the testimony that was given, and you don't go beyond the scope of direct examination. And you need to give us your address, please. Do well, you want my name? Uh, you're Ernest Mignoli, correct? Well, I'd like to say it if I could. Ernest Mignoli, 710 7th Street, Southeast Florida. I just recently sold my home on Deer Lake Drive. I'm looking for another place in Asbury. And uh, I'd like to ask the uh, developer a few questions. Go right ahead. Okay, go ahead. As long as it has to do okay. with what he said, what he spoke about, go forward. Well, okay. So uh, I, I guess it's Mr. Fasano. I don't know which Patrick it is, but I'm assuming it's a uh, senior, if there's a senior and a junior. But anyway, uh, Mr. Fasano, so I think you stated it's going to be an owner-occupied uh, I guess you're going to occupy the, I guess on a five story, it would be called a, a penthouse level. That's correct. I, I'm getting the top four. That's correct. Okay. So, and, and so you'll uh, pretty much uh, occupy all the top floor or just one of the units on the top floor? One, one unit. Oh, and there are others. There's one other. Okay. All right. 
Uh, I had a question when you said that uh, you want everybody to enjoy uh, the view, the ocean view. And I, I can appreciate that. Uh, uh, but my question is, I, I think you're proposing a five story building. It'll probably be about 60 feet high. Am, am I in the ballpark? Yes, four, four floors with the roof deck. Oh, uh, and one for the parking on the ground level. Correct. Okay, so you got a floor one is parking, four floors, and then a roof level with two, uh, I guess, owner occupied or master suites up on the top. Uh, so my question is, when you mentioned about you want everyone to enjoy an ocean view, are, are you saying that for most of the 14 units, and I think that includes the two on the top, that there'll, there'll be an ocean view? I'm just wondering how that works with the North Beach directly in front uh, and, and the Berkeley and, and some other buildings around it. I'm just wondering uh, the, the ocean view. Uh, yeah. well, do you mean like a partial or, or do you mean only from the top floor or just if you could clarify, that's all. Fortunately, James Bradley was a visionary and he created incredibly wide V-shaped streets. So everyone in the front, everyone from the second floor to the penthouse gets a beautiful ocean view. Thank you, Mr. Bradley, to the Bradley plan. The couple units on the first floor in the back where the uh, motel is behind, they may not enjoy the view until you get up to the third or fourth floor. This is why we've provided a common deck on the roof so that everyone can gather socially after they're vaccinated and uh, enjoy the, the ocean view and have a little social area. I'm hoping that it's a nice community. It's only 14 units. It's not like it's a 200 unit condominium complex. It's 14 units. Okay. You know your neighbors and hopefully we all get along very nicely and have a, have a nice, a nice summers together. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for the clarification. So what, so really uh, a lot of the uh, units or, I don't know, a percentage of them will, of course, look forward to the best amenity, which will be up on the roof deck, which will be two, uh, I don't know, penthouse units, one owner occupied. And then there'll be, I don't know, a third of the roof deck for the common area. Is, is there a, per, a percentage approximately for the common area? I think about a. a the upper roof, about a third of the upper roof is a common deck, but each oh, of the 14 okay. units all have their own private balconies, and the majority of which will have will enjoy the an ocean view because of the height that you mentioned. That's correct. Okay, and then when they want to go to the rooftop deck, well, what are you going to have, a center stairway in the building to go up? No, or an there, elevator? There, there's an elevator and two stairs because that, that's what the code requires. Okay. All right. I, I understood that. Okay. Uh, and you, the, the footprint on the building uh, relative to the lot, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think you testified to that, so maybe I shouldn't ask that. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to stick to what you said. Uh, so you are going to be full-time owner-occupied. You are going to be on the top floor. There is a management company, but you're there to oversee everything. And you indicated that uh, that uh, at least in theory, you want it to be meticulous. And then somehow you're going to create like a common enjoyment area up on the roof. Uh, and I, I did have a question for you. That might be a little bit unique for that lot in that area. Uh, do, you, do you think like having a common deck would, I don't know, bother any of the neighbors? I mean, with a bunch of people up there or, or you've already thought of that. It's, it's too far away. Well, I mean, you know, certainly the, the, the hotel, the Asbury Hotel has a, a, a bar and music and movies on the roof. We're not going to certainly have parties like that. I think it's more for sunbathing and, uh, and, you and know, uh, quite enjoy. I that. agree. That's what I, that's what I meant. But uh, specifically what I'm talking about, when you're on the top floor on the deck, the building that you're proposing to build, and it sounds like it's going to be built, is is directly west of the west facing North Beach, first five floors. So basically, 
the North Beach, which had a west view, when your building goes up, you're going to get an ocean view by taking their west view. And, and, and that's the way development works. I'm not criticizing you for that. Mignoli, but what I'm saying is, Mr. Mignoli, oh, ask okay. Question, okay, so testify. what I'm asking is, what I'm asking, how, how are the people up on the deck and even the penthouses and on all the floors are going to get around the fact that the North Beach pretty much, if, if you face from your building east, will be directly in front of you and probably in a radius, it'll be, I don't know, 50% of your radius of your view. So what you're, I think, you're testifying. Or just clarify for me. You're Are testifying. you saying that the stop, views... Stop, Don't talk over me. You're testifying. Ask a direct question on the testimony that the man gave. You're now going into parameters that he spoke nothing about. So let's, let's stick to what he said and ask your questions. Go ahead and, and ask your question now. He's on mute. I muted him. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's unmute him. Go ahead, Mr. Magnoli. He's, he's still showing mute on my end, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I have to get an automatic uh, unmute button for Raspberry, so I don't have it yet. I ordered it. Um, but uh, so, so Mr. Fasano, re regardless of where you are on the east side of your building, up on the roof, or any of the units in front of North Beach, you, you, uh, is it more clear to say possibly it's a nice ocean view, but it's not an unencumbered? It is not an oceanfront building. Yes, that's for sure. Oh, okay. Right. That's, that's, yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Because again, I was a little confused when you were when you were kind of alluding to the fact that it was kind of like a full ocean view. Okay. I don't have any other questions except for the professional. Thank you, Mr. Ringnoli. And uh, let's go back now to Ginger Margoli. Please go ahead and speak. You can go ahead and unmute yourself at this point. Ms. Margoli. All right, I'd like to uh, allow if we have the latitude for when we go back to public questions that if we ask Ms. Margoli one more time, then to see if she would like to ask Mr. Fasano anything. Um, maybe we could get this resolved by then. No objection, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank okay, you. let's go. Next. Okay. Thank you. There are no other questions. Okay, Rich, uh, you're, you're back on the record. You've been sworn. You're the project architect. And I guess just uh, in a couple of ways, uh, uh, revised plans were submitted. Why don't you talk about, uh, I think, well, Pursuant to the board's request, there was a request to see to see side and rear elevations. Were they submitted? Yeah, or, originally we did submit elevations which were in black and white, and what we were requested to provide were uh, uh, rendered viewpoints similar to the one we provided for the street uh, facade. Okay, and if I can just interrupt, um, er, um, Irina, this is me being a, a, a non-technical person. Can you all see uh, what's on the screen? Yes, thank you, and just... Okay for clarification that exhibit has been marked as A, A6, correct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So Rich, explain to the board what they're looking at and, and the changes that we were talking about. Um, this viewpoint was previously submitted and the only change which, were, which affected this uh, viewpoint would be the substitution uh, of uh, wire cable uh, guardrails uh, for the previously um, designated glass panel guardrails. That was the sole change on this on this viewpoint. And so the glass located, guardrails located, are gone. Yeah, located the glass panels are gone. As you can see, uh, we're indicating wire uh, guardrails uh, at the terrace. Uh, um, 
collateral locations. Okay. And what are we looking at next? Okay. Um, this is uh, a view of the front and right side of the building. And then, excuse me, Irina, this would be a, uh, would that be? Uh, is this the west or the rear? Is this the front west elevation? <laughs> Correct. Yes. That is That is marked as exhibit A7. Thank you. And, and, and this is just a viewpoint taken from that corner of the building showing the west and front uh, sides of the building. Uh, likewise, the only change made uh, reflected here is the cable rails in lieu of the glass panels. Excuse and me. I'm so sorry for that interruption. So apparently, Ms. Margoli, speaker, is working because we just had some of her conversation coming through. Um, so do you want us to interrupt or? Let's, let's, keep, let's keep going so we can okay. keep a flow going, please. Thank you. We can bring her back in later. I'm sorry for the interruption. Okay. All right, so Rich, continue. And uh, what you see on the screen now represents the rear elevation. I'm sorry, can we go can we go back to the west? Sure. One second. Okay. Will there be other uh, drawings regarding streetscape or is this it? Um, uh, streetscape will be testified to by the engineer. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay. What is being shown in the back of that? Like the, the you've got some other building photoshopped into the back. What is that meant to represent? What, what does what represent? The Background of buildings. Is that the haircut? That's North Beach. That's North Beach. Yeah. Well, it's a depiction of North Beach. It's not North Beach. That's correct. It's artist and artist. It's just shown for scale. It's not intended to show the, the exact building. We didn't model any of the surrounding buildings. They, we just selected and photoshopped in comparable uh, uh, buildings just for scale. And the back building is what would be considered the motel? Yes. Okay. And this is the rear, this is the rear elevation view. The rear. So right. this is what faces the motel? Yes. And just for clarification that Elevation has been marked into exhibit as A8, the rear elevation. Okay, so this is the south side. If I may, the floor plans for the third and fourth floor don't match this rendering. In your A2, you the A2 drawing one, this it says that's the second, third, and fourth floor plans showing a extension of the terrace beyond the face of the building and that from this rendering that would only be true on the second floor not the third and the fourth yes so we don't have a typical third and fourth floor plan you do no we don't no so so which is the right one is it the one we're looking at or the one that you provided which is the correct one Drawing so is... one represents the second floor, not the third and the fourth floor. 
the um, third and the fourth floor would be slightly shorter on the rear. No, okay. it, it'd be, the back red guardrail of the terrace would be in line with the back wall of the secondary bed. Okay, this is one of the ones that we requested to be done back in September. So we need this corrected in the next time that you come here. Also, if I may request yeah, that you put the square footages of every terrace on every plan. I'm sorry, Dad, repeat that. That was insert the square footage of every terrace on, on every plan. Every plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rich, just in terms of, um, would you be the one to testify regarding wheel stops in the parking garage? I can. Excuse me, this is Michael Sullivan. Can we go back to the rendering? I have a question about the rendering. It flew by so quickly. The rear? So, so, just so I understand, I'm trying to resolve the rendering with the uh, the architectural plans, and we've just established that the second floor has a uh, terrace that projects beyond the, the wall of the building. But there appears to be some sort of a notch in the wall in the back, and I, and it's not clear to me how that works with the with the building footprint. Um, I don't know if there's a not yeah there's a there's a projected area that comes further out, and I don't understand how that works because it it's a symmetrical terrace on the on the second floor there you see it at the back there you see that 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 extension that comes out the back that was done at the request of uh the board's engineer to provide adequate um space for turning movement into the adjacent three parking spaces. So I'm sorry, but is that is that projection only that 24 feet, or is it on the rendering? It looks like it's half of the building. No, it's just in the aisleway. Okay, if you go back to the rendering, it doesn't look like that. No, if it see extends out, see the shadow. Oh, I see. Piece. Okay, I got you. So that's so that's on the floor. That's on the the parking level, right? Yes. And and this elevation does not uh, show a fence in this location. No. But there will be a fence yeah. between that wall and the property line. Yes, I think uh, that was artist license to better show what was on the property. To put the fence there would um, conceal what we're proposing. Um, okay. along, along the sides, how is the garage being ventilated? The, the, the garage will be ventilated with louvers on the side there, and there'll probably be an exhaust fan for the purposes of mechanical ventilation. Um, will there be exhaust fans, or will there probably be exhaust fans? There will be exhaust fans. There will okay. be exhaust fans. You would need to vent greater than 50% of the surface of the garage to avoid an exhaust fan. So can you indicate on your first floor plan of, of the locations of your proposed louvers? They're shown on the side view, as you see down by the top of the fence, up on the plan. Would you indicate it on yeah. your floor plan? Yeah. It, no, it's not shown on the floor plan, but it's shown on the uh, elevation as well as the rendering. Can you um, go to the elevation then? And so... Um, it's noted as aluminum louvers, and you can see it on the right side and left side elevations. Right. So... Uh, when you come back, will you be indicating where the exhaust fans would be located? No. What 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 does that mean? No. <laughs> it has that has yet to be designed. That's something we do during construction doc documentation. Once we get a mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineer consultant involved with the project. 
We're not prepared to indicate that location at this time. Mm -hmm. Nor the size. All right, go ahead. All right, uh, Rich, there was a question about uh, wheel stops in the parking garage. Yes, if you go to the garage plan, you'll see stops have been indicated um, in each parking space that's adjacent to a wall and called out. At the request of board members. Correct. Yes. Okay. And uh, Rich, would you be, uh, I know there was a question about uh, garage door warning lights. Would that be you or would that be um, Walter? Um, it, it could be either, but we could provide a warning, a suitable warning light. And you would agree that if this application is approved, that would be a condition? Yes. We've worked with the engineer to arrange uh, what he would consider to be adequate warning lights and signals for that door. Rich, did you have any, uh, before we turn over the board questions, uh, did you have any further uh, items you wanted to address? Uh, can, can I interrupt <clears throat> briefly here, Madam Chair? Um, as far as the warning light goes at the garage, uh, you know, there, there are products that are available and it's pretty straightforward. Um, I, I hesitate to, to take the reins on that and make the call on whether it's suitable, mainly for aesthetic purposes. I think what they're proposing in concept is fine and it'll work okay, but I, I know that you like to see those type of details. So before we move on from that, I wanted to see if, if you wanted to have them provide some sort of spec sheet or plan revision to indicate what they're thinking, or if you're okay with, uh, you know, providing some latitude. At, at this point, um, I'm okay with some latitude, but I want, that will be a condition, no doubt. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Rich, do you have anything else uh, to add about any changes or any other comments and questions that uh, the chair uh, raised in her summation of last meeting? No, I think I covered all, all the changes which were made to the drawings that were agreed to by the applicant. All right. Who would who would uh, who would we be talking to about the HVAC systems? Would that be the engineer or the architect? Um, I can speak to the HVAC system. Uh, the um, uh, the condensing condensing units, which are basically just um, similar to what you would see on a single family house, are are located uh, in the side yards to be closest to the units in which they serve. There are some okay, that are I, may, I, may I stop you so, so we don't go down a path? My concern is those eight units that are sitting there, they're on a side lot. I am 100% against those. So I'm thinking that we need, an, we need a different plan for those eight units that will be essentially in the backyards of the other properties that are adjacent. So I personally have an issue with that. Um, I don't know if anybody else on the board has an issue with that. Uh, Jason? Well, there's, there's an aesthetic side, which the board should consider, and I'm sure Michael uh, will have an opinion on that as well. And there's a uh, sound consideration too, which is likely okay, but being that close to the side property line, you just want to make sure that um, they're not going to exceed the state or uh, city sound code. But the, I think your biggest issue is gonna be the aesthetics. I think that's what you're getting at, so. The, the reason why we located in those locations is because there's a limit, a uh, distance limit that we have, we cannot exceed from uh, the units to that, to, from the, the units of, to the residential apartments that they serve. So the, the units which can have a condensing unit on the roof do, because the line is not, it, it is, is within that parameter, However, um, to run um, a line from the front units and the lower part of the building to the rear yard would be too long to have a functional um, condensing unit set up. 
So that, that is why we located them on the side yard. Now, with respect to aesthetics, uh, we do have fencing that are shown on each of the side, side yards, which would conceal um, those condensing units. If you would like us to have additional fencing, um, just surrounding each of those, uh, the, the, the four sets of two, uh, as long as it is a sufficient distance to allow the condensing units to operate properly, we'd be willing to add that. But uh, in lieu of that, I don't have any other suggestions with respect to where to locate those units. Just to just to be to be clear, there is a, an exception that's required to do this. It's not it's not just a choice that the the board is hinging on here. You're required to prove to them that you deserve the exception. So uh, I just want to make sure that nobody misses that. Yeah, I mean, you just can't run a line set that yeah, way. We, we, we're I'm limited sure. as far as where we can run, where we can run lines to those units, and it's not. It's not feasible to locate them in the rear yard, uh, the ones that serve the um, uh, the front units. Madam Chair, I think Mr. Fasano will have something to add on that too. No, I mean, my, my experience- Wait, Hold on, hold on, time out. Once we do that, now we've lost the continuity and on cross-examination- I'm sorry, okay. Thank you, good point. Rich, I, I think I cut you off. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think, Basically, what I'm suggesting is there, there are, at least for the front four condensing units, there's no viable alternative. Um, we can check to see if the four that are closer to the rear yard can be moved back to the rear yard. However, um, that also may exceed the line limitations as well. So as a, as, as a compromise, I might suggest, if, if, if it's purely an aesthetic issue, then I, I would suggest maybe we can put a louvered screen around the condensing units to screen them uh, from view, but also keep in mind that each of those side yards does have six foot high fencing run the entire side, side yard line. So I, I'm not sure how visible they would be from the public way at all. So I, though I appreciate our uh, our board engineer and his mentioning of the actually the aesthetics, which I appreciate. My concern is more sound. I live next to these kinds of units. They are not. They they are loud. So that's my concern: is the sound and the impact that's going to happen to the people that have balconies that are overlooking these, as well as the properties that are adjacent to them. If, 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 your, if your criteria is a noise ordinance with respect to these, um, we can verify that these do not exceed uh, the noise ordinance, but, but without a standard by which we can make that comparison, um, I, I can't tell you what loud is and what loud is, other than to give you, you know, decibel uh, uh, measures uh, that are located from a, a certain distance from those units to the adjoining property. But in the absence of some sort of criteria, I can't say if they're loud or not loud. They're just standard residential condensing units. Is it an option to place the units on the roof? The, the units which serve the apartments that can be put on the roof already have. Uh, you'll see that there are um, eight units located on the ground floor of, at, at grade. There's three in the back roof area near the rear of the building. There's two on one side and one uh, on the other on, on each of the roof plants. So uh, a total of six units have their condensing units on the roof because they are close enough to run a line. Unfortunately, the units which are on the second and third floors are, are too far from the roof to look to practically run a line. So we located those at grade. And the only place at grade close enough to run that line for, for a few of those units are on the side yards. So, so, so if, the, if the concern here is mostly acoustical, there could be a, a screen that has acoustical dampening pro, uh, properties, correct? I mean, I need it. I mean, yes, if necessary. Yes, if necessary. 
So there is a, a, a state, <clears throat> there's a state code and a city ordinance about noise, which does define black and white what is noisy and, and too loud. Uh, if that's the concern, then the spec sheet can be submitted, which will uh, provide that information and we can verify that it won't exceed those requirements. Yeah, we'll, we would provide that. All right, let's move on. Okay, Rich, do you have anything uh, more to add? No. Okay, Madam Chair, that's the conclusion of the direct testimony of the architect. Okay, does the uh, planning board have any any questions that they would like to uh, present to the architect? I have one last one about your drawing A2, um, drawing um, page, uh, sheet A2, drawing one. Two units are labeled A and two units are labeled B. When you come back, can you just make sure that they're labeled for consistency? Yes, well, if, if, if that's needed, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah yes. I'm, I'm not seeing where we're talking about. So. Oh, in the front? Okay. Well, yeah, there's two A's. And there's two A's. Okay. And I, think that, I think the intent there was only to indicate the unit type and not necessarily the unit. Understood, but we've already covered that the third and fourth floor plans need to be provided. Yes. Does anybody else on the planning board have a, any questions of the uh, architect? Yes, Jim Henry. Uh, can we go to the yeah, ground floor plan? It appears, unless I'm reading this incorrectly, to access from the garage to the stairwell on either side, correct? No. No. There's no access at grade level to stair number two. It goes. It goes from up from the upper levels directly out the door. There's no access to that stair from inside the parking lot. It appears there's no access. One, stair number one is accessed uh, through the elevator lobby. Yeah, and that takes you out. It takes you out into the uh, the lobby and out through the front access, uh, the front door. But uh, but somebody coming down the west stairwell with a bunch of garbage on a rainy day has to go outside uh, to get their garbage or recycling into the uh, recycling room or their. Uh, That's fire. It, it would, just they they would not take the stair. Just, they just would not take they more than likely to take the it just seems to me yeah there's no reason it just to seems to me the better plan would would have it would give you access through the garage from either uh either stairwell no because then that makes the uh this parking spaces on on either side of that stair unusable that was deliberately omitted because we did not want to lose those parking spaces. So anyone who's on an upper floor who wants to go to the refuse collection area will either take stair number one or the elevator, go through the parking area to the entrance to the refuse and recycling area. If someone refuses to use the stair or the elevator and chooses to use stair number two, then you're correct. They would go outside and then in, it's inconvenient. So they're unlikely to do that but they certainly have that option. Well, it just seems to me that's not a very workable plan. Right. Stair two was, always, was solely intended to be a means of egress, fire escape, have, have, uh, emergency uh, stair. Have you taken a? Have you calculated the net to gross efficiency of this building? No. Would you be willing to do that for our next meeting? I don't understand the reason for that. That's not my, would you be willing to do that for the next meeting? No. Well, let's, can we just, uh, what, what are you, just so I understand, uh, sir, what are, you, what are you looking for? 
Um, well, the net to gross efficiency of a residential building is a reasonable measure of how efficient the floor plan is and how much space is going to things uh, that, you know, are uh, stairs and corridors and outdoor space. And I'd just like to understand where we are at that. A typical uh, residential building has a net to grace, you know, a, a 35 to 40 percent loss factor. And I'm just curious what it is. <laughs> Is, is there some criteria found in the redevelopment plan which would require a minimum efficiency ratio? I don't know that it's a criteria, but I think some of the concerns that the board has c expressed about the massing, the articulation, the inefficiency of the interior circulation that was just brought up, all of that stuff would, be, would show up in your net to gross ratio. Uh, we're not willing to give you that ratio. Well, then we can certainly opine whether or not the floor plan is efficient. And if you think that's uh, what the purpose of this land use hearing is, then you're entitled to do You know what? We'll, we'll, can we come back to that a little bit, sir? Of course. Thank you. Anything else from the planning board members? If not, I, I want to make a, a, an inquiry when everyone sure. else. Uh, anybody? One quick thing, Jack. All right, Alexis. Because yeah, Alex, I'm still not. First. Sorry? You're first. Oh, Alex. okay. I'm still not satisfied with the answer of the H. I understand the vertical lines, I guess. I mean, for the vertical distance that it has to travel, I guess I get that, although it seems that that's been overcome. But did you consider. Um, because you had to add that bump out in the back um, uh, to accommodate additional parking, it already is creating a little bit of a screen. Have you considered like moving them? Is there any consideration? To the what was then that? It's the, then it's directly under the balcony of the, of the purchaser. Are, are you talking about in the rear yard? In the rear, yeah. Yeah, that's where the balcony is. We were not getting an uh, additional parking because it's not enough depth. Uh, they're saying put the condensers in the back. Oh, the condensers. Saying those condensers are now under the depths of all the people who just purchased rather than in the side yard. Okay, so uh, let's, people, let's, people. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. That if we don't want it to be under the balconies, why don't we want it to be under the balconies? Is it the noise? <laughs> because we lose hot air. Because why? We located them where we felt that it was the ideal location and within the parameters for the, the line distance. So, so if we're suggesting that they get located where there seems to be reasonable room to put them, so there's no issue on the side yard, the answer is no. Because there's, a, there's terraces that th there are terraces there. This is right. where we're proposing to place them. On, on the one side, there's a vacant lot. And on the I mean, that's the best. Uh, that, no, Mr. Mr. Fasano, no. I'm sorry. You're, you're not, I'm sorry, but you're not part of this in this situation. Well, because we'll then we back. would have to open it up again. Right. Okay. I, I guess if you are establishing criteria by which we should make some exception, um, burdening your side yard neighbors because you don't want to mitigate or deal with the noise for the people who are purchasing your apartments to me doesn't seem like a strong justification. I, I think this is the like a, a design or, no, or another design or, or another justification to consider it. I think Mr. Fasano can address the issue of the, the neighboring properties better than I can. Actually, actually, may I step in? I, I really am trying to, and, and Jack can help me out here, is no. that we really can't have Mr. Fasano start again because that opens up everything again for us to have to go through public, public question, planning board question. We understand, and let me be clear, we understand any property today has a vacant lot, tomorrow could have a four-story building on it. We understand that. So what's there today may not be there tomorrow. 
Let me just say that. And if we want to, Mr. Fasano would like to start the testimony again, I'm going to have to leave this to Jack to say, what do we do? Well, what I would say is, is let's not hear from him right now. There might be a time later on tonight when we have to hear from him again. Uh, but I don't think that uh, if you're okay, Chair, that would not be right now. Okay, that's fine. If we want to, if we want to do that later, that's fine. Uh, if we see that that's necessary. Okay, uh, anything else from the planning board members of the architect? Uh, the only thing I want to do, if everyone else is done, is I want to make sure that we, uh, I want to make sure that we only cover the issues that were discussed on direct examination, that we don't get into on cross-examination um, items, the general architectural plan and everything else that was discussed at the first meeting. We're not reopening Pandora's box, so to speak. So let me go over this, what I have, and everybody can tell me if I'm wrong or, or if there's something else. The initial uh, elevations that you submitted, for uh, the, the amended elevations that you submitted, uh, Richard, for tonight, uh, when you showed the the, the, uh, the four sides or three sides, where they, you were showing us the difference between where you substituted the wire cabling for uh, versus the glass on the balconies. Um, and then <clears throat> you talked about the wheel stops, uh, where they're going to be, that they're in fact now on the plan. Uh, that the uh, you will come up with a, a, a light system, a warning light system for the garage entry, which will be supplied to the uh, board engineer. Uh, and uh, we talked about the uh, HVAC unit location uh, as currently depicted on the plans. And then we talked about that bump out on the ground floor uh, that was installed for the purpose of increasing the turning radius or traffic uh, flow within the parking garage. Were there any other issues that you addressed in, on direct examination or anyone else have any idea, any opinion on that? Did I cover it all? Uh, just, just signage, uh, Jack. In the signage that I thought that was Pat that said that the signage was going to be the number. I'm sorry. On. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. I want to limit the scope of cross-examination to right. for tonight. Okay. All right. That's, that's what I have. And so that's fine. So I know where, where we can go on cross. Okay. Uh, any, any other board members have anything before I go to the public? Okay, let's, uh, Irina, let's open it up to the public. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I have one hand raised. Mr. Mignoli, go ahead and ask your question. He needs to identify himself for the record also. Go ahead, Mr. Mignoli, you've been unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. So Ernest Magnoli, 7th Street, Southeast Florida. Uh, I had a question about uh, you're, you're referring to uh, condensers or coolers out in the out on the property and up on the roof. It, are these units, 14 units, going to have their own HVAC for each unit? Yes. Is the HVAC combined in the unit which means it's it's a heat pump and an air conditioning or is or is there gas coming into this building what what I'm, I'm just trying to understand when you say hvac that means heating ventilating and air conditioning and what i'm saying are are you talking duct work and or or is there a boiler for the building and it's got heat and then you're just talking about the air conditioning unit so no, that's each, all I'm trying to find out. Each, each unit runs on a forced air system. The unit which is indicated at grade on the rooftop are condensing units for the air conditioner. Uh, the other parts of, uh, of the HVAC system are self-contained within the unit itself, and they will be a ducted system within, for each of the units. There is no central air. There is no central heat. I, I understand. Thank you for the clarification. So now, so now is my question. We're talking a four-story building here, 
And uh, is it your experience that four-story buildings are incapable of running uh, coolant for cooling to a condensing unit is too far to go from a first floor to a fourth floor? Is that your testimony? And, and that's why you need to place that the way you are? And my testimony is to run a condensate line from the lower units up to the rooftop is too long and, and, and is it in, in, inadequate to serve the condensing, that condensing unit. So we locate, we shorten the lines by locating the lowermost unit condensing units to be in the side yards. Okay, but you're, uh, again, your justification is based on your calculations and science that putting the units on the roof for the first floor or rather the, the living floor, it starts with the second floor. For the second and third floor, it's too far to run the line from the, from the uh, uh, condenser on the roof to the second and third floor. That's your testimony, correct? And yes. therefore, you're locating them in the yard. Yes. Okay. Now I'm asking you, what science and engineering are you using? Because I, I don't only own, but I live in buildings where five floors have all roof air conditioners and there's no problem reaching the units. So I'm just trying to understand when you say it's too far to run from a roof unit, which is probably where all these could be or should be, but you're saying it's too far to run from the roof to the second and third floor. Therefore, they have to be in the yard. Uh, again, I'm asking, what science is that? How far is too far? We made a determination that it's too far. I don't Your own determination. I don't recall exactly the routing dimensions that would need to go, but that's a determination that we made. Okay, so pl placing them in the yard, the justification is that it's because it's too far for the roof units to run to the second and third floor, the conden condensate lines. Is that your testimony? Yes. Okay. The refrigerant line. Refrigerant line. Okay. And it was also your testimony when I asked you, is it too far based on what? You said based on your determination. But when I asked you for the science of running condensate lines in a five-story building, servicing all five floors is standard procedure. You said, well, but we used our own standard. Nobody, and I, can, me. I, Nobody I, I is that what you said? Is, is that what you said? Is that what you said? Excuse me. Nobody established that that's standard procedure. He gave you his opinion. So I, I get where you're going, but streamline your question and just get to the point. Okay. Uh, you, is, is it safe to say, with all due respect, that your determination for placing the units on the ground is because you don't want them on the roof because you have other plans for the footage up there. So therefore, you're testifying that it's HVAC science not possible to run the units, the condensate lines from the roof to the second and third floor because it's too long. And when I asked you about the science, you said, it's not about the science, it's my determination. And that's all I'm trying to get at. Is that why they're in the yard? Because you determined that it's too far. Could you repeat the question? Are I you determining? You okay. All right. I'll, I'll try and trim it to almost nothing. Are you, when, when you say you're determining that the run of the line from the roof on the condent, 14 units, for the second and third floor, the reason you're putting the eight units in the yard is because if they were all up on the roof, the lines can't run to the second and third floor. It's too far. Is that your testimony? That's my testimony. Okay. All right. That's that. Then, then that's established. Uh, 25 feet. Okay. So, feet. And, and, and are you aware that that's, well, I guess you are aware that that's your determination, correct? That's correct. And, and if I were to, or anyone were to ask you for the calculations, w would you be able to supply those? Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, now, the ne next thing is, 
assuming that you place the units out and about around the building, uh, at least from the footprint that I saw, these, this is going to be a snug fit for that whole neighborhood. And anyone who's ever lived with a with an AC condent unit, they're, they're kind of loud. They're like little mini... Uh, Mr. Vignola. <laughs> they're loud. They're loud. Mr. Vignola. Okay, okay so, so are you aware that they're loud? What's your criteria for loud? How many decibels? Uh, How many decibels? Uh, uh, are you aware that if you're near them, you can hear them? Are, are they audible if you're next to them? I would. I believe they are. Well, I mean, you're placing them right next to the building. Everybody's going to hear them. Isn't that correct? You, you, there, you haven't provided a criteria for me to compare against. If the, if the criteria is found in the ordinance with respect to the amount of decibels at the property line, we can verify that, that, that it conforms. However, if you only rely on a subjective statement that it's loud or you can hear it, I can't respond to that question because you've given me inadequate information with which to respond. Okay. Are, are you aware that the condensate units all have ratings on them, which gives that information? And in other words, when you have one unit and then you compound it with eight in a confined area, not only does it give off forced air, but it makes a lot of noise, more noise compounded. Are you aware of that? Are you asking me? Are you asking me theories of acoustics with respect to decibel ratings and to what degree no, no, they no, no, with multiple units? As no, I I asked you if you're aware that every single condent unit has all ratings that comes with it for noise, for power usage, for the heat that it throws off when it's cooling the coolant, etc. And and hold on, wait, let him you're answer. Aware. Ernest, okay, okay. The good right. question. I know. Let him answer that one before you go to the next one. Okay, okay. Are you asking me if I believe that there may be labeling on the units that indicate decibel ratings? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you, are you aware that there are ratings on the units? There's no such thing as a unit. I'm not, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware okay. of that. All right. That's an answer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, would, would you be willing to look at the specs and compile eight specs, which you're proposing on the ground, and realize the amount of noise, and then compare that to the city standard as, as nobody seems to know what it is. But let's say one thing in a confined area with eight condensing units going. I'm sorry, Magnoli. I, Mr. Magnoli, I've muted you because you're testifying. Please ask a question. Are you aware that the, the specs on eight units are more than multiplied times eight when they're conjoined in a confined area. Meaning, you're creating a little mini, a, um, are, you're going to be creating well, a mini. You get, you ask okay. the question. Let him ask the question. Let him answer the question. No, no, your assertions that doesn't work. Uh, acoustics are measured on decibels, which are measured on a logarithmic scale, scale so they're not additive. Okay, but you're testifying. You haven't looked at the, the units, how many well, tons they are. Well, now you're, you're asking me about acoustics, and I, I'm telling you that you that if a, if a unit has a certain decibel level and you put eight of them together, it does not mean that you have eight times the decibel level of one. Otherwise, if you have like four of them together, it would probably cause severe damage to your hearing. Uh, well, sir, all, all I'm saying is, whatever the decibel level for each unit, correct, is multiplied times eight when you put eight of them next to each other. No, you don't. The decibel rating is not multiplied times eight. Mr. Mr. McCauley, your, your question okay, was... All right, all right. Was he answered. answered. That's his answered. expert opinion that if you put eight units, it's not times eight the noise that each one makes. I'll accept that. Let's move on. 
Uh, and I think you talked about the garage a little bit. You talked about the bump out. And then you talked about the, the, the issue of the, uh, the refuse, garbage, with people. The reason that they're not coming down a stairwell to the ground level <laughs> is because if you did that, you'd lose two parking spaces, correct? No. I thought that's what you said. No, I said when, when it was suggested to provide an internal access from the parking garage to stair two, I said it would necessarily lose parking spaces. Okay, correct. Correct. So the reason it's your testimony that if someone's on the second floor, the reason they can't go the way you're designing it to the, to the garage level is because they'd have to go outside because if you gave them access, you'd lose two parking spaces. Correct. No, that's, that's incorrect again. I explained right. how yeah. someone on an upper floor would use stair number one and the elevator to have an internal route from their unit to the refuse area without the need to leave the building. Okay. Why is there no stair access to the parking level to, to get rid of people's refuse? Why not? There is. I repeat again. No, you know, this, this question's uh, been answered. Ernest, it, there is, I, I, there is ac excuse me, there is access. It's just through stairwell number one. There is no access to stairwell number two, but there is access from the parking garage into the, the staircase. Yes, and there's, also access to the, and there's also access to the elevator as well. Right. right. Okay. But, but didn't we say that if there was complete access to both stairwells, that the reason that there isn't, that someone would have to go outside if they chose not to ride the elevator, which I don't know if I've ever seen a design where someone rides an elevator with the garbage, but that's beside the point. What, what you're saying is to have double stairwells in the parking would, would negatively affect two parking spaces, maybe compromise them. You'd lose them. I, I would add unnecessarily. Okay. Okay, but, okay, uh, is, it, is it in your design uh, long experience, it seems like you have a lot, and I know the, the builder has a lot of experience, is, is it usual design to have people walking with refuse in elevators and, and stairwells from a fourth floor? I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen that. I'm just uh, uh, wondering. Yeah, you can't. Okay. Don't tell me what you're okay. seeing. Just let, let him ask the question, answer the question. Okay. Are you asking me if it's unusual? No. It's a fairly common practice. Uh, okay. In, 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 some, in some cases, uh, the refuse is located in external junk dumpsters at the other side of a parking lot, which people take the trash down the stairs or elevator through the lobby into their car and drive across the lot to a dumpster that's located on the other part of the site. That's probably the most extreme, but what you're describing where they just use a stair elevator just to go down to the level where re recycling and trash are collected. No, that's not unusual. Can you give me from your building and a rather architectural background, a building in Asbury that has something similar? I'm not familiar with buildings in Asbury. Okay. Uh, can you give me an example of a four-story building like this with underground first-level parking and a rooftop deck that you've designed that has this, this configuration with how people get in and, in and out with their, or rather out with their refuse? Anywhere, yes. like in Montclair. Did you build yes. one somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Where, Harrison. Where? Harrison. Carteret. Um, uh, no, no. Okay. Pa uh, Patterson. Is it a building built within the last 10 years? Yes. Okay. All right. And that's an example. That's not a question. No, it is. In other words, in this building said, in yes. Patterson. He gave, you asked he him and he just gave you the answers. Uh, okay. I thought he was asking me to clarify. No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. Huh. 
And then this thing about the bump out, I, I, I guess what you're talking about is the there's a protrusion somewhere so that people can kind of maneuver in the garage, correct? Yes. And does does that affect the distance from the building to the to the sidewalk line? To the sidewalk line? Or to no. any line. Does it make the does it make the building bigger on the footprint? Well it makes it bigger by the bump out. He's gonna come so, okay. All right, so the bump out bumps out from the from the building itself to accommodate people to swing into and out of parking spaces. That was added, right, correct. That was added to the okay. All right. All right. Now, now, now I just, one clarification. How, how many feet is the bump out? Um, I believe it's five. Let's go check. Uh, it's, it's, it's a five foot bump out. Yeah, Can you tell foot. me how wide it is? Can you tell me how wide it is? 24, approximately 20. Interior is 22 feet. Okay, so, okay. all right, so it's safe to say, and I'm asking you, you, you need to create a turning radius in there, and this, uh, this accommodates that. That's why you did it. This, the, the board's engineer asked us to provide that space so that turning movements exiting the no, parking space number 10 and number 11 have the ability to back out and almost do like a half a K turn and come forward to face uh, the, the exit from the uh, parking garage. Okay, so so when you're on the sidewalk looking at this building, I guess you're looking at the the uh, oh wait a minute, you're looking at the the north face of the building. There'll be a protrusion, you'll see. Okay. If you're standing on the property where the motel is located and there is no no, I'm talking the other side, the north side. If you're on the okay. sidewalk of the north, it's on the opposite the bump out on the it's 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 on the side that faces the motel. That's, you don't see that from the sidewalk. Oh, okay. I get it. So in other words, uh, the bump out, the air conditioning units, and a lot of stuff is headed for that southern side. There are no condensing units located on the southern side, and I don't know what you're referring to as other stuff. All right. The bump out bumps out from the southern side, correct? The bump out <laughs> is on the rear part of the building. I guess that's that is the south side. Yes. Okay. And the north side is right. uh, okay. And I th I thought some of your condensing units were going on the south side. What you're saying is they're going on the east side or the west side? Correct. Or both. Or both. Correct. Correct. Both. Both two locations on the ground floor. Correct. Okay. Is there a cluster of eight somewhere on the ground floor? No. All right. Give me the configuration. Four somewhere and four somewhere else. Yeah, I think somewhere. They're, in group, they're in groups of two. And two of those groups of two are on the west side. Two of those groups of two are on the east side. On the west side and the east side. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now I have a question. Is any of those condensing units Underneath the terrace. That's already been answered. Is the answer yes? No, the answer is no. Okay, there's there's no terraces above the condensing units as they're proposed. He's running out the clock. Correct. Okay. I'm I'm doing what? Nothing. Don't don't get involved in side conversations. Yeah, just I know. Channel, please I don't don't make comments. It just prolongs the. The, the discussion. Hmm. Go ahead, Mr. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Yeah, I had to unmute myself. I, 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 again, I need a button for these meetings because I get muted so many times. Um, and uh, let's see, we covered garbage, the bump out, the condensing units, and. Okay, uh, you talk about the parking. You didn't testify about curb cuts tonight, right? That was at another meeting. No, he did engineer not. engineer will testify to that. Oh, the engineer yes, will. The question is no, he did not. Okay. 
All right. Uh, uh, okay. I think if the engineer is going to be testifying to curb cuts and other issues about the, the building, I guess I'll wait for them. But I think everything with the architect I asked. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Magnoli. I don't show any other hands raised. And just for the record, um, I'm sorry, I forgot her name, but the woman who had her hand raised previously has left the meeting now. Okay, so, okay. So can, can I just reserve, um, just so that we keep in mind, Irina, that if, um, as this meeting will take more than one, there will be more than one meeting, I'd still like to, Give her an opportunity if she comes back. Um, this is for. Let's just make a note. Yes, Thank of you. course. Oh, of course, okay. I'll keep an eye if, if she does return. Okay. I, I did notice that she had two um, devices connected to the meeting, and then and then she did leave the meeting earlier. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Let's move forward. Uh, just so that we know, for the sake of the applicant and the board, we are uh, we have a hard stop around 9.15, 9.20, because we have an executive session we have to get to. So um, uh, whoever your next witness is, please bring them up. Okay, Walter Hopkin, engineer and planner. Okay, uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, Walter's already been sworn. <laughs> and pre-qualified as both an engineer and a planner at the last meeting, I believe. You know, he, he wasn't, I don't think he was sworn. Well, let's have a real briefly. Then let's, uh, let's, let's, let's do that. All right, so Walter, just real briefly, in case anyone on the board doesn't know you, would you recite your uh, license and certifications? Sure, and, and in the meantime, uh, Mr. Uh, Trokier, Mr. Um, Arsbegger, if you could, um, I think at this point, um, unshare your screen so I can refer to my plans. Um, again, my name is Walter Hopkin. I have had the pleasure of testifying before this board. I have a Bachelor of Science from Drexel University. I'm a licensed uh, professional engineer in the states of New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. I have a professional planner's uh, license in the state of New Jersey, and I also am a certified municipal engineer in the state of New Jersey. I've been well, licensed by this board as well as over 70 other boards. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that we accept uh, Mr. Hopkin. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you. And Walter, just for the record, you're, you're familiar with the site in question, correct? Yes, I am. And you're familiar with the plans? Yes. And you were uh, virtually present for, for the hearings, uh, both hearings on this matter, correct? Virtually, yes. Okay. Uh, so why don't you, uh, you know what some of the board questions are. Uh, why don't you talk to the board about the engineering? Why don't you describe the engineering uh, aspects of this proposal? Sure. And, and thank you, Madam Chair, for recognizing me, uh, my credentials. Uh, the board, I, I think at this point, is well aware of the site. I don't think that I need to, I would normally orient you in the surrounding uh, sites, but uh, uses, I, I think you're well aware of those. So in the interest of brevity and to get as much as I can in and any uh, feedback from the board before 9.15, uh, I'll skip to what exists there now. As the board's aware, there's a, approximately 5,400 square foot commercial building. It is served by all public utilities. There's a paved area. It has just over 100 feet of frontage, uh, and with that, a 58-foot curb cut. Um, and what I can do, uh, I will start to, to share my screen if it's okay um, with the board. I know there has been some, can the board see my? Um, yes. Okay. So th there are uh, actually, we're counting it as two on our plan. Um, this was the plan that was submitted back in May of last year. Uh, there are two existing uh, parking spaces um, that are striped along the frontage. There's this one here. There's a tiny bit. I really wouldn't count this one over here. And there's half of the space over here. So one and a half or two existing parking spaces. And that's due to this large curb cut that exists in front of the uh, building. The drainage does currently go in two different directions, either out to 7th Avenue or to the rear where the motel is. Um, the board should note that right adjacent, right on this property line, there's pavement. That, that parking lot is, is immediately adjacent to the property line. Uh, and there are downspouts that, do, uh, that are directed onto that property now. 
As you know, there's been several TRCs. Uh, we were not involved with those. They were primarily architectural in nature. However, our office did meet with ISTAR uh, just to briefly go over uh, as, as the, uh, the developer is the subsequent developer, any plans that they would have this in this area and to kind of understand how this project would integrate into the ultimate streetscape that's planned for this area. Uh, and, and in those meetings, I can represent that, that ISTAR said, listen, the, the, there's a lot of improvements that are proposed along 7th Avenue. Um, we do have kind of uh, an excerpt from the redevelopment plan uh, on our plans, just for reference. Uh, but as you can see, there'll be a complete reconfiguration of the, the street area. So it was their recommendation to us as the master developer that, um, that we, we leave as much area within the right of way as, uh, as grass area and that uh, any landscaping be uh, maintained or restricted to along the property line. Um, what's being proposed, I, I believe the board is now very familiar with the, with the building itself. There are 23 parking spaces uh, within uh, the, the parking garage uh, and will be one handicapped space, which is indicated here. And the spaces are nine by 18. Uh, your ordinance requires, I believe, 21 spaces. So we have 23 uh, and that exceeds your, your ordinance. Um, I, I do believe that in, in either the planners or the engineer's letter, there was a reference to RSIS and the fact that RSIS uh, does not reconcile with your ordinance. Uh, and, and it is clear in RSIS that there is a provision that alternative parking standards um, shall be accepted if the applicant demonstrates these standards better reflect local conditions. And those factors, um, uh, and I'm, I'm characterizing here, include um, availability of mass transit, urban versus suburban uh, locations and available offsite resources. So I believe, you know, we do ex exceed your ordinance. We don't quite meet RSIS, but I, I believe that uh, we meet the intent. Um, we did discuss the, uh, the wheel stops. Those were reflected in the architecturals. We haven't reflected those in our plans yet, but would certainly accept those as a condition of, of uh, any, um, any approval. Um, I believe we talked about refuse and recycling. Uh, Mr. Fitchner uh, reached out to my office uh, prior to this meeting and uh, we went over a few things. I, I believe one was lighting uh, with regard to the property line. And I have discussed that with the architect and um, I believe we're going to be able to address his comment to, to, get, to reduce the uh, illumination along the property line. The other issue I think which was important to him was drainage. Uh, what's, what's proposed is um, a few things. The plan that you see before us, we have made a revision to, uh, I believe it was submitted to the, to the city, maybe hasn't quite made the rounds yet. So that's fine. I just wanna assure the board that we have addressed this. So in the rear, although the, the existing building is against the property line and discharges onto the paved area, we have provided a small, and, and the board will see this in any subsequent plans, a small depression in this area for, to allow for recharge, which will minimize the impact to, um, to the paved area, although that's where the water gets today. Uh, there is a small recharge area in the parking area, a small recharge inlet, and that's just for any snow melt or runoff from, from the cars that may contain rain after coming uh, into the parking garage. It is covered and this would be a recharge area. What we were proposing that Mr. Fitcher suggested that we revise with it was that the roof leaders be directed out into the lawn area. Uh, our thinking for that was just to provide additional recharge, but uh, I believe a, a better solution to that might be to tie into this uh, inlet, which is available on 7th Avenue. Uh, we do have the, the slope to make that work and would work with his office to, to accommodate that connection. Um, I, I know well, that there's. Yeah, uh, do you mind if I interrupt for a second there? I, I, I'm so, guessing we're going to move on to drainage. So, uh, Madam Chair, is it okay if I ask a question right here? Absolutely. Go, go ahead. Well, let me just understand what you were just saying. So, I saw in the revised plans there's the small basin in the rear yard, and there's the recharge inlet in the parking area, and then there's uh, the, the roof runoff. Are you suggesting that the plans would remain? with the basin in the rear, the recharge inlet in the parking lot, and then roof runoff would be connected to the inlet? Is that what you're yes. saying? All right, what we're suggesting is that any runoff to the rear yard where that basin is, plus the inlet in the parking area, plus the roof, all be directed to that inlet out in the street. 
That's all. Um, right. Okay, I don't, I don't. I have to double check the 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 slope to make sure we can make it from the rear. I know we can make it from the front. Um, and I apologize. That's a misunderstanding on my part. But we can accommodate at least at least the front leaders and and this inlet. All right. If if there's an issue in the back with elevation then uh, what we'd have to do is evaluate what water goes there today just to ensure that we don't increase any runoff to the neighboring property to the south. But, we can uh, do that. We absolutely would do a pre versus post in the rear. Okay, all right, thank you. Sure, and thanks for clarifying that. Yep. Um, there is a, a, a fence proposed along the side uh, property lines to tie into uh, an existing fence along the rear. Uh, what was shown on the plan was a, a six foot high PVC fence. Um, Mr. Fasana, through maintenance and, and having properties in Asbury, uh, would prefer that this be uh, a wooden uh, board on board fence be substituted for this PVC. Um, I, I guess with his experience, um, the PVC fences tend to get blown over with the gusts that occur uh, and would prefer a wood. So we would, there are six foot high fences along the side property lines. Once we get to the front, it ties into an ornamental fence, which is shown on the architectural plans. This is, uh, if I could jump in, this is Michael Sullivan. You know, coordinating the fence design uh, and the finishes uh, with the building, I think is important, not just for the front fence, but also along the, the sides. Um, having a, a board on board fence may, may or may not be consistent with the building's architecture. And uh, I originally thought that the architect was gonna deal with fencing. So um, uh, I'm, I'm suggesting, and the board can decide what they want to do, that this be coordinated with the architecture so that it feels like one place and not a uh, throwaway, you know, screening fence on the sides. I appreciate that. And although I'm extremely optimistic that we would finish and get a vote tonight, it, it doesn't appear realistic. So we'll, we'll make sure that we, we address that uh, at our next appearance. Thank you for that input. Uh, and I know with, with, uh, with a, a lot of anticipation, uh, we're going into the streetscape and I don't wanna fall short here, um, but, but what's being proposed is just foundation plantings uh, along the, the, the building frontage. Because there's gonna be a reconfiguration of the area, we tried to uh, do as much as we could without wasting resources with uh, having this torn up. We do have street trees, there is a lawn area from the right of way out to a um, five foot uh, wide sidewalk. There's another five foot of a lawn area between the sidewalk and the uh, existing curb. There will be a, a brick paver apron uh, at the driveway and there will be a brick paver which connects the uh, public sidewalk to the entrance to uh, the pedestrian entrance to the lobby. There's some additional landscaping along the side uh, as well. And with the proposed striping and the reduction of the curb cut, we are showing three um, parking spaces along 7th Avenue. Did, uh, did you, do you know what the timing is of the uh, future streetscape improvements being uh, completed? I do not. I, I, I asked and we did not get an answer. I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna sound like I didn't, that wasn't important. It was something that we asked in ISTAR and we did not get a, a timetable on that. Yeah, so, so here's, here's my sense. The, the lawn takes up a lot of water and, and maintenance and things to keep it nice. And the degree that you can minimize lawn, um, in a lot of ways it's, it's helpful uh, in water usage um, and better practices that way. It requires less pesticides. So. Um, and I don't think that if you were to increase the area of plantings or shrub plantings in the front to add uh, some color, um, some durable native plant material, removing them at some point, if necessary, because you haven't overlaid what the new improvements are going to be over this, we can't really see where that extent is. So um, even if those shrubs had to be moved, it, it might be 15 years before that goes in. So I don't know that this street frontage should suffer um, with minimal improvements um, during that time frame, when it would take very little effort in the context of a major streetscape uh, reconstruction to move some shrubs in the future. That's my suggestion. Uh, I, I can appreciate that. And I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of, of, of other input. Um, we, Quite honestly, Mr. Sullivan, we have sought input on this and, and received very little definitive 
suggestions. So um, although we do believe that a lawn area is appropriate for this, um, we're, we're open to suggestions, which we have not received. Um, I mean, there's additional, uh, the, the existing utilities will continue to serve the site. Um, I, I believe I've touched on most, most of the professionals' letters. I know I can agree to any, um, any requested plan changes, but we'll leave it up to uh, Madam Chair as to where you wanna go from this. If you wanna let the professionals have me address anything specific in their letters, if the board has questions for me specifically, or, or what the next step would be. Well, usually, usually what happens is that you would go through the professionals' letters and answer the areas that impact our, our, your area of expertise, because the architect already went through some of them, but not all of them. So we need you to go through that for completeness. Well, are, are you speaking about, I mean, for, for completeness, there is a section of Mr. Fitcher's letter. He has four items of completeness, um, which we, we would address uh, on plans. I, actually, we, we have addressed and, and submitted to the city, but I don't think they were distributed uh, to the board members and, and their professionals. Okay, which, which four are you speaking of when we're looking at his letter? Uh, the completeness review on page three. Uh, excuse me, page two of eight. And to, to clarify, we don't do the completeness determination. We do a review and make comments, but we defer um, to the city for that. So I just want to give that perspective. Okay, so how about if we go... Th All right, so so Jason, on your on your letter, which items have not been discussed with the planning board yet, because this is the first time Mr. Hopkin has presented in front of this board. So we need to go through this letter. So um, I, I highlighted in my letter some things that I wanted to keep an ear out for and, and make sure were addressed so that the board could consider them. Uh, and if you like, I can just kind of skip through and go through those. But I, I just want to mention that um, if Walter, the applicant, has any uh, questions or issues with any of the other comments, I'd ask you to bring it up. I don't want to skip over things as if to say it's not an issue. It's more that I'm skipping over it, figuring that you agree to comply or address that comment. So if there's anything you'd like to um, discuss outside of that, just let me know. So that being said, uh, a couple things that I highlighted. Um, has there been discussion about uh, how loading operations would take place. So we have discussed that internally. This is a for sale product. So loading really isn't anticipated except very infrequently when residents move in or out. Um, as far as uh, we don't expect any other deliveries other than Amazon or FedEx, which typically would just use an available space nearby uh, on the street and deliver to the, uh, the package area. Okay. All right, next item I have is uh, rooftop equipment. We may have addressed this already. I know um, we talked about the HVAC equipment. Is there anything else on the roof uh, that would be a concern uh, for visibility? Uh, I mean, I think that would be more, uh, I don't want to go back to Mr. Arsbinger, but I think it's probably in his purview as far as anything on the rooftop, nothing that I'm aware of. All right. Uh, as far as refuse goes, uh, how about some discussion about how it works? Not so much the owners bringing the refuse down to the refuse room, but what happens from the refuse room to the truck? So the, the refuse would be wheeled out to 7th Avenue by the porter that Mr. Fasano's indicated would be on, available on site to, to maintain it. And uh, it's proposed, I, I don't know that we made this clear. I, I believe there was previous testimony that the refuse would be privately maintained. Um, however, there's been a reconsideration in that and that uh, the this project will rely upon the city's um, uh, refuse and recycling pickup. 
So it will be wheeled out to the street for the city's refuse and recycling to pick up. When you say wheeled out, that be done by building personnel. I'm sorry, I got two. I'm two sorry. Questions. I'm sorry, Jason. No, go ahead, Jack. Okay. Uh, the, uh, will the trash and recycling cans be taken in and out by building personnel? That's my understanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when we talk about wheeled out to the street, are we talking about cans? Yeah, I, what do they call them? The uh, toters, I think, is what is the term that they call? The, the yeah. big plastic, yeah. I got you. Um, and what about recycling? Would that be the same? Yes. Okay. City collection? Correct. And how about bulk items? Uh, that I'm not familiar with. I'd, I'd hate to put a pin in that and let Mr. Fasano come back to it, but, um, I, I'm, I'm quite frankly, not, not sure where the answer is. And I don't want to lead the board in the wrong direction. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about impacts to neighboring properties. We got that already. Ground level writing, lighting. You mentioned that, um, the next go around you'll submit or the architect will submit a revised plan, bringing down the lighting levels at the property lines. Yes. Okay. Um, storage, that was an architect thing. Okay. Uh, four weeks of recyclable materials can be stored at the site. The requirement is, do you think there's adequate space for that? Uh, I, I mean, I can't answer that. Uh, I, we've talked about that internally. I don't want to represent something that I'm not familiar with, but I believe the architect and or Mr. Fasano are comfortable with that, but I, I, I'd rather they make that representation. Okay. Uh, we talked about loading. Uh, drainage, we talked about. Uh, I'm, I'm clear, and, and I, I think you and I are on the same page about the, the next go around on drainage. And again, if you have any questions or wonder, please give me a call. We'll talk it through, but I think we're clear on that. Yes, thank you. Yep. Um, <clears throat> electric uh, transformer. Uh, there's too many things on my screen right now. I'm trying to recall if you show one on the site plan. We do. Um, we show one in the back uh, here um, in anticipation of the streetscape improvements and, <laughs> and the underground um, utilities in the future. So electric. that would be screened by the fence then? Correct. Okay. Um, ADA, we got that. Those were the only things that I wanted to address, Madam Chair, so I think we're good. Okay. All right, so we still have, um, we still have questions that we would need from the, um, from any other professionals and the board. Um, and we're hitting the 915 mark at this point. So, um, I'm going to suggest that, uh, that we stop at this point and that the modifications that have been requested of, uh, the planner to, um, bring those forward to us for the next meeting, because obviously there's some documentation that has to change having to do with stormwater. There are some uh, fencing issues, um, and there probably will be some discussions with Mr. Fasano uh, at some point regarding, if, as a po or the architect, one of the two, uh, to answer some of the other questions um, that we have. Um, but uh, we we are going to need to uh, move this application to uh, the next available date. Madam Chair? Yes? Uh, may I ask, and I know we're not going into uh, board questions tonight, but we're there just to make our next meeting even more productive. Are there any uh, generic uh, questions or concerns that we should alert uh, Mr. Uh, Hopkins to so that he is prepared at the next meeting if the board has any specific questions or comments, or we're not going to get into that tonight? No, no, that, that would be fair. What we can do is that we have a few minutes that we can do that. So if we could just uh, if any of the planning board members have anything that they would like to see, um, just as a note so that we, we can uh, get that next time. I know for me specifically is understanding the, um, 
having to do with the shrubs and all, all the streetscape is specifically, what are we expecting from future I-STAR improvements versus what is specifically going to be done on this property by this applicant? I don't need to know right now, but that's what I'm gonna to wanna to know. Uh, and you know that you're gonna need something new with stormwater fences, like I just, like I mentioned before. Um, anything else from any of the other members of the board so that we can have a better meeting next time? I mean, a, a further, um, an extension of this constructively. Anything? Madam Chair, I don't want to be out of out of order, but I just I just want to make everybody aware so we have a reasonable expectation that what, what I start proposing or what's going to happen to the streetscape, as far as I'm aware, has not been designed. The only thing that we have to go by, and, and Mr. Sullivan or any of the other professionals, if they're aware of it, we, you know, I'd like to know about it. Is is this schematic that was included on the in the in the redevelopment plan? So, as far as what will happen, uh, unfortunately, I think that's 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 not something we can provide. Uh, except all right, I'm, I'm being. I, I want to be very specific. Okay. What will be on your property? Just your property, not the street, not not between the sidewalk and the street. Okay. Your property. Okay. That's all. Okay. That's what I'm interested in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Any anyone else have anything that they would like to bring up that they're interested in that uh, we haven't covered yet? Nothing. Don't be shy. All right. All right. Th thank you. That was helpful, Madam okay. Chair. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at at this point. So let's move on. Um, Irina, do you have uh, another, the next available date, please? Uh, yes, so the next available date is May 17th of 2021. Okay. And um, uh, may I request no further public notice? Yes, as long yes. as you want to consent yes. to extending yes. the time within which we have to act under the MLUL. We, we do so consent and um, um, I'm assuming remote meeting again. And uh, Madam Chair, just, just for the record, I believe the, uh, the um, infrastructure component report as part of the redevelopment agreement sets forth the information concerning the streetscape program. So I will, we will have more information presented to you. Okay, and you will be providing us with the additional information that we asked of the architect also. We will provide you with a lot of the information that you requested. We, we Everything, take, uh, okay. Um, all right, can I get a motion to uh, uh, move this application to May 17th without further notice? So moved, right. Mike Antal. Okay. Seconded, Alexis Taylor. I have a motion by Malcolm Manzella and a second by Alexis Taylor. Mayor John Moore. He's sleeping. John, you there? I'm I'm sorry. Do we need to take roll for yeah, the we carry? Yeah, we should. We shouldn't always just stay. Okay. Or not because we don't. All know. right, we'll come. We'll come around back. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton. Yes. Michael Manzella. Yes. Jim Henry? Yes. Jennifer Souter? Yes. Alexis Taylor? Yes. Eric Gallipo? Yes. Rick Lambert? Yes. Barbara Krizak? Yes. And Mayor Moore? Uh, we're okay. We have, we got eight out of nine if we don't okay, have it. We're all right. Great. Uh, application carried to May 17th, 2021 without further notice. Thank you. I, I, I'd like to thank the applicant for uh, giving us a latitude. We have an executive session that we have to go through that we had planned for today. So that's why we had to uh, adjourn a little earlier than we normally would. Um, thank you. Thank we you appreciate that. that. Right. 
Your next Thank meeting you. will be totally yours. Thank you. Okay. Ernest Magnolia's meeting. Um, Barbara, before we uh, <coughs> exec, can we take a five minute recess? Yes, but do we have to, uh, don't we have to uh, pass this uh, resolution? Yes. All right. We have a resolution uh, to discuss some uh, attorney client privilege. Um, can I get a motion to, can I get a motion to pass? So Jen Souter, I, I move it. I'll second. second Mike. Okay. Okay, I have a motion by Jennifer Souter and a second by Michael Manzella and uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the resolution to enter into a executive <coughs> session is marked as exhibit B6 on your screen. Yes, and now um, we have to go to, we have an executive session Zoom that I had sent to everyone. If um, I'm assuming you all have that, if you could just go to that one and then we're gonna have to come back to this one afterwards. Um, do we need anything else, John, to, I mean, uh, Jack, to move? Yeah, we need a vote on the resolution. Yes, I'm sorry. I have a, we have a motion a by Jennifer Satter and a second by Michael Manzella. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Any opposed? Resolution approved. Okay, so we can... All right, can we, do we have to do anything before we go into executive session? I'll just recess this portion of the meeting and then take a five minute break and go back on to the executive session. Okay, so let's let's all be back at 9.30. Sure. Okay. Thanks. See you on the other side. Good night. Bye. 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 Okay, we are back in session, We're resuming from executive session, and I will now take roll call. Mayor John Moore. Here. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton. Here. Michael Manzella. Here. Jim Henry. Oh. He will not be here. Yeah, he's not here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Jim Henry is absent. And Jennifer Souter? Here. Trudy Syfax is absent. Alexis Taylor? Here. Eric Galvo? Here. Rick Lambert? Here. And Barbara Krizak? Here. Thank you. I updated it again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're in order. Uh, we, we're not going to disclose the substance of our meeting since it was within the attorney-client privilege, and I put that right in the resolution that we adopted. So uh, unless there's any other business, uh, I would assume a motion to adjourn would be. Yes, the motion. Uh, I'm, I motion to adjourn. I second oh. that motion. <laughs> I have a motion by Robert Krizak and a second by Eric Gallipo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much, good night. everyone. And good night. have a good wonderful night. evening. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank have you. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night.